Countdown. Countdown. See, I told you you were going to say that. Was I going to say that? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Huh? Good morning, Liam. Good morning. We'll make special mention to Liam. Uh, are you? We, we could see you better this way. Say hi. hi. <laughs> Liam is my Chinese son. <laughs> I'm Chinese too. Yeah, Papa, where are you? Oh, okay, yeah. Well, my 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 son from Shanghai, my adopted son from Shanghai. Huh? Yeah. How's that? Yeah. He's uh, he's here on uh, two week stay with us, and uh, we're hosting him. Um, their family moved over to China, so he is the second of seven children. Seven children. See that? Amazing. Yeah. Well, speaking of seven children, yeah, okay, we'll bring it up later. Anyway, today we are going to read the gospel for today, and it comes from St. Luke chapter 10, verses 13 to 16. So we're still on that, uh, that whole uh, story of the disciples going about preaching, spreading the word of God, and our Lord told them to go around, you know, uh, preach the word of God. So here... Uh, uh, Jesus said to them, Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty deeds done in your midst had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would long ago have repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And as for you, Capernaum, Will you be exalted to heaven? You will go down to the netherworld. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. He was addressing his disciples. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. Whoever rejects you, rejects me. And whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. Our Lord here um, is asserting His own authority and the authority that He gave His own apostles when He commissioned them to preach the Word of God. In other, in other uh, episodes in the Gospel, our Lord also tells His apostles when He commissioned uh, St. Peter and named him to be... Um, uh, the head of all the apostles, he told them, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever sins you bind on earth are bound in heaven. Whosoever sins you loose on earth are loosed in heaven. And our Lord also says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And in another gospel narration, our Lord says, I will send you the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I will send you, the church, the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, who will be with you forever, who will be with you till the end of time. And he himself said, I shall be with you till the end of time. So our Lord makes promises of this sort to his apostles, that while he is sending them into the world, right, um, he is always going to abide by his church. He is always going to be the founder of the church, the head of the church, and he is always going to be uh, the head of this mystical body, which is the church. He is always going to be the leader of the church. And his apostles are there uh, to, to be his ministers among his people. So the church is there as our assurance. Assurance that what we believe in is true. That we are following what our Lord Jesus Christ himself has um, taught us okay, about the Father and about um, the way by which we are all going back to the Father. 
And he has commissioned the apostles and the church to preserve his teachings. Not only to spread it, but to interpret it correctly and to spread it among all men. That is why we should not doubt the church. And that is why our Lord has given the authority of infallibility to the church. And here it is very clear. He says, whoever listens to you, listens to me. Whoever rejects you, rejects me. And in the Catechism, we can review this. In the Catechism, Part 1 on the Profession of Faith, Section 2, Chapter 3, Article 9. You can look it up. It's all there. Uh, the hierarchical constitution of the church. Why the ecclesial ministry? And we can read in point 874, Christ is himself the source of ministry in the church. He instituted the church. He gave her authority and mission, orientation and goal. Christ gave the church authority and mission, orientation, and goal. In short, and goal, goal, the objective of why the church exists and what it, what it is here for. In other words, in other words, it's our Lord who uh, uh, leads this church, leads us through the instrumentation of the priests and uh, the hierarchy from the Pope to the last priest. When Christ instituted the twelve, he constituted them in the form of a college or permanent assembly. He meant them to be a group. That's a college is, in other words, a collegial body. At the head of which he placed Peter, chosen from among them. Just as by the Lord's institution, St. Peter and the rest of the apostles constitute a single apostolic college. So in like fashion, the Roman pontiff, the successors of Peter and the bishops, the successors of the apostles, are related with and united to one another. Okay? The college of bishops has no authority unless united with the Roman pontiff, Peter's successor as its head. As such, this college has supreme and full authority over the universal church. But this power cannot be exercised without the agreement of the Roman pontiff. It is this magisterium's task. Magisterium is the teaching authority of the church. It is this magisterium's task to preserve God's people from deviations and defections. And to guarantee them the objective possibility of professing the true faith without error. See? Guaranteeing them the objective possibility of professing the true faith without error. Thus the pastoral duty of the magisterium is aimed at seeing to it that the people of God abides in truth that liberates. To fulfill this service, Christ endowed the church's shepherds, meaning the Pope and the bishops and priests, with the charism of infallibility in matters of faith and morals. The exercise of this charism takes several forms. So here we can see, folks, here we can see that the church has been vested with all the authority she possesses and she exercises today in order to teach us the truth, in order to um, put us along the right path to, um, to our faith. And that we should not doubt what the church teaches us because the church teaches what only our Lord, only our Lord uh, teaches us. And we have been given the certainty of that guarantee of infallibility. That is why, 
what is the practical consequence of this for us, for us Catholics of today? You know, today, there's plenty of confusion going around the church. And the truth of the matter is that this confusion is only caused by one thing. Ignorance. People who are ignorant of their faith are the only ones who get confused by it. People who don't abide by the truth are victims of ignorance. Either they have not studied things very well or they refuse to study and dig up the truth or they, um, for whatever reason, have gotten lost along the way. Right? So, um, it is very important for us Catholics to really study the faith uh, faithfully. To really abide by the teachings of uh, the magisterium of the church. And today, especially, we have plenty of Catholics who pick and choose what they want to believe in. Okay? They have been given this uh, moniker of uh, cafeteria Catholics. Yeah, cafeteria Catholics who just pick and choose what they believe in. Say, oh, this one appeals to me, so I will believe it. Oh, that other one's a little difficult, and I'm not sure I really want that. So, no, I'm not going to believe that. That is why there are so many Catholics who call themselves Catholic, but who support abortion, who support contraception, see, who support divorce, and, and many other uh, patently evil and immoral uh, practices. And since they think that they can keep these things to themselves, particularly uh, things related to contraception, birth control, and all that, well, they think that, oh, anyway, nobody will know. Anyway, nobody will notice. So outwardly, I can profess to be a Catholic, but inwardly, or in practice, I pick and choose what I want to believe in. And that, that is not being Catholic. That is not being true to your faith, to our faith. If you are Catholic, you better believe everything. Otherwise, don't call yourself Catholic. So it's, it's, also, um, it's also funny how uh, many of our politicians do the same thing. Right? <laughs> They say they're Catholic, yet they support abortion, yet they support contraception, they support all sorts of wrong things. Okay? So it's... Uh, Joseph has the examples. Huh? Joseph has the examples. Well, we don't have to mention names. Okay? They know who they are. <laughs> and we all know who they are. And that's why... Uh, well, what do we do about these people? Number one, brave... Pray for them, Mia. Very good. Pray for them. Let us pray for all of these brothers and sisters of ours who call themselves Catholic, yet do not want to follow everything that the church teaches. Okay? We have the assurance and the guarantee from Christ himself that the Holy Spirit is in the church, that the Holy Spirit is in charge, that Jesus Christ is the head of this church. We have no reason to doubt. We have no reason to, uh, to uh, uh, be picky okay? and to pick and choose what we want to abide by. Okay? And, you know, uh, even, even uh, uh, more recent controversy with the Amoris Laetitia, okay? with that exhortation uh, of uh, the Pope, Amoris Laetitia. There have been plenty of... Um, Opinions rendered about it. All I can say, folks, is... You know, confusion will always be part of any, uh, anything that the church asserts. And um, I am not a theologian to, uh, to pretend to be able to uh, delve deep into... Uh, the um, nitty-gritty uh, and consequences of uh, Amoris Laetitia. But here's what I have to say. 
Let us have faith in the promise of our Lord that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Number one. The church has been around for 2,000 years. If, if really there's uh, any storm that would have toppled the church and, uh, you know, uh, Amoris Leticia might have been uh, uh, just a drizzle compared to many other things that have beset the church in the past. But the church is still here today because the Holy Spirit abides by the church. Number two, let us show more respect for the Pope. The Pope might have had the need to take all the time that was needed and might still be needed to clarify matters for us. I understand it, could, it had caused confusion for many people. But there is always merit in waiting. Waiting. And respecting how the Pope uh, works and how the Pope does things because um, it is a question of respecting how the Holy Spirit guides the church. Let us have more faith in the Pope. He may have his um, human uh, side to him which, uh, which might not sit well with plenty of people. You know, popes have different styles of um, uh, administering the church, uh, have a, their own styles of uh, administration and management, but and their own personalities. But let us take comfort in the fact that the Holy Spirit is behind him. The Holy Spirit is guiding the pope and the bishops and the church. And that in the end, everything will be clear. Everything will be clear. I think what we should not do is to jump into conclusions right away and to carry out our own actions right away and for some of our bishops to go ahead and interpret things on their own right away. There is merit in waiting. In the same manner that there are plenty of confusions that were created as a consequence of Vatican II only because people could not wait. Only because some factors of the church decided to go off and do things on their own. And that lack of patience caused plenty of confusion and have caused plenty of trouble for the church as we know it today. So let us have faith in the Pope. Let us respect the Pope's way of doing things. Let us respect the way the church operates because it operates under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And, oh, besides that, let us not become cafeteria Catholics. Let's obey everything, <laughs> you know, it's for our own good. As we tell our own children, right? And as we just repeated last night, you obey, even if you don't understand things, you obey because it's for your own good, right? The simple logic that parents give their their children all the time. And it is only in hindsight that you will realize your parents are right, after all. It is only in hindsight. And the same thing is true with the church in many respects. It is only in hindsight. And let us not confuse. Let us not confuse, because I know there are people who are going to react to this. Let us not confuse the, what, what the church does as, uh, uh, as people. Okay? Let us not confuse the personal actions of bishops, priests, and uh, clerics with what the church does officially in exercising uh, the, its magisterium. Let us not confuse those two things. Priests are also human. They make mistakes. They have their own defects. But when the church acts with authority, asserting its magisterium with matters of faith and morals, then we have to learn to distinguish that from the human personalities that are involved in this church. Okay? Problems arise when we confuse the two. But when we have faith, we will know how to distinguish between what the church teaches in the exercise of its magisterium and what its uh, instruments do in the exercise of their own personal uh, 
uh, agenda <laughs> or whatever personal reason they might have. Okay? That's it for us folks today. I hope you have a nice weekend. Tomorrow is a very, very special feast. Vote I just want me! to remind you. <laughs> for, for her, she said she's Mia Rosine. Our Mia Rosine's birthday tomorrow, October 7th. But, but besides her birthday, it's, it's also the day of the Holy Rosary. And that's the reason why she was named Mia Rosine. Mia is for Mary. Rosine is Rose. Rose is where the name Rosary comes from. So Mia Rosine, who was born on the Feast of the Holy Rosary, is celebrating her... How many now? Eighth birthday. Fourth birthday! <laughs> Ninth birthday. Sorry, I missed the count. Ninth birthday no, tomorrow. No, I'm the one celebrating. I okay. know my age. Now, just keep quiet. I'm not done. <laughs> Let us celebrate Our Lady's uh, Feast of the Rosary tomorrow by saying our rosary well. Let's do it very well. Say it with love for Our Lady. Say it and say it. Hi. You're distracting. You're distracting people. Okay. Anyway, anyway, let us pray the rosary very well. Okay, thank you very much, folks. We're off to Mass today. Have a good day, everybody. Have a good weekend ahead of you. Bye. 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 Bye.